Antarctica, the penguin capital of the world, where life often hangs by a thread. Every year, penguins gather in their millions, protection enough while they feed and mate. This is the story of an annual congress deep inside our planet's freezer. The Antarctic is a continent of eternal ice, except for the northernmost tip. Here, a string of volcanic islands rear their dark heads every summer. Relentless winds and ocean swells make Elephant Island an unlikely summer destination for the masses. Yet the short summer months lure thousands of penguins every year to these shores, like the macaroni penguin. Banding together for protection can be a mixed blessing. One penguin strays off the beaten track and the others invariably follow, now with desperate consequences. Miraculously, many survive the fall, only to face a new ordeal. Giant petrels, the vultures of the seas. This macaroni manages to make a beeline for the shore. Round the corner, a large captive audience awaits the story of his survival. Far safer to stay at the colony, even if the social agenda down there is a touch claustrophobic. Residents must find a mate and breed, all within the cramped confines of an extinct volcano, before the summer ends. In spite of the numbers, family ties still count. Take for purposes of identification Mr. and Mrs. Macaroni, a faithful, loving couple who have staked out a room with a view at the top of the colony. They have brothers, sisters and cousins. And of course, many other unrelated neighbors. Antarctic fur seals also migrate here for the summer, but their playfulness masks a less savory side. For starters, fur seals turn their noses up at monogamy. A dominant male will take as many as 15 female partners. Secondly, while the lumbering seals on land may seem innocuous enough, in the water they're a menace. And penguins must take to the water to feed. That includes Mr. Macaroni, joined by others for a good day's hunting at sea. Before long, dozens more follow in their footsteps. As for Mrs. Macaroni, she's molting and must stay dry. The last hurdle before entry, bands of giant Davilia algae that stretch in the protected leeward side of the island.
Like dolphins, penguins porpoise through the water at high speed, but conserve energy by lunging through the air too, more like the birds they actually are. The exposed windward side of Elephant Island offers an altogether different prospect. For a second party of macaroni, entry proves a little more tricky, but no less feasible. Once in, it's plain sailing to join up with the Leeward party. They're heading for an area called the Antarctic Convergence, where cold and warmer waters meet. Changes in water temperature fuel the food chain. The ocean swarms with krill. Now the penguin's evolutionary path makes sense. The macaroni can dive up to 300 meters and hold their breath for 20 minutes to gorge themselves on their staple diet. The entire population of 11 million macaroni consumes 600,000 tons of krill every year. This is predation on a massive scale. Back on land, Mrs. Macaroni is on Baywatch, waiting for her partner's return. One hunting party prepares for a leeward landing. These are dangerous waters. Even as a welcoming party assembles on shore, the returning hunters become the hunted. While the macaronis fattened themselves at sea, the fur seal was biding his time. Beaching in this threatening environment takes great technical skill. Launching full pelt onto the shore is one way. The other is to catch a good wave. As all good surfers know, you have to be in sync with the wave. The first seal's time has come. Those who blew the first wave must wait for a second. The interval can be agonizingly long.
Many penguins are missing at sea, and others are injured. But the sacrifice is small in the overall scheme of things. Even the walking wounded no longer fear the seals. They only feed in the water. Petrels are less fussy. Conditions on the other side of the island deteriorate and there's still no sign of Mr. Macaroni's hunting party. Could Mr. Macaroni be among this party? And why opt for the exposed windward landing? The fact is, the coast is clear. Seals are nowhere to be seen. Look who's made it, Mr. Macaroni himself. Only the rock face stands between him and the lady on Baywatch. Some appear to falter at the last minute. Is it exhaustion? And where's the welcoming party? Certainly not here. This bunch are aggressively territorial, enforcing a minimum elbow room of two lengths of a flipper, or else. Crossing the colony to find your loved one, even after a long journey at sea, is a dangerous obstacle course in itself. Even the giant petrel keeps his distance. With the summit now in sight, Mr. Macaroni rejoins his loyal partner. And loyalty can't be taken for granted. Only a third of all macaroni mate for life. That's impressive compared to fur seals who regularly move from one harem to another as if the ocean were one big playground. They sometimes roam further down the Antarctic Peninsula, along calmer shores far from the violent swells of the Southern Ocean. The brief respite of summer still holds sway. Halfway down the peninsula, volcanic rock gives way to shields of granite, polished by the timeless movement of ice. This is Paradise Bay, a summer resort favored by numerous species of penguins and seals alike. Sheltered coves offer penguin fans the joys of real bird-watching diversity. Chief among the penguins is the Adili, with their telltale white rings around the eye, particularly pronounced during the breeding season. Standing two feet tall, the Adili are about the same size as the macaroni, and every bit as agile. Who are these fellows? A black collar signals the chin strap. The chin strap's halting gait is nothing to be sneered at. 
No more, let's say, than any other penguin on land, whatever you might think. Chin straps look as noble and proud as... Well, who do we have here? The orange-red bills of the Gentoo stand out from the crowd. Taller and fatter than the Chinstrap or Adili, the Gentoo are the most imposing penguins in Paradise Bay. Looks are often deceptive. As the three tribes settle in together for the breeding season, you'd never guess from their appearance how they behave. The bespectacled Adili are in fact the most restless and sporty members of the colony. They sprint about the bay trying desperately to avoid the wind and moving ice. As soon as conditions change, they're off again to find the next choice piece of property. If the collared chin straps seem permanently dressed for a ball, they're slum dwellers. Sand, mud and guano. Thank you very much. In spite of sporting bright beaks, the Gentoo also frequents slums in search of pebbles and lichens. They spend days sniffing out gems from the blackest holes to line their nests. Little disturbs a convivial summer in Paradise Bay, where the sun never quite sets. Like Elephant Island, beyond the ice flows to the north, penguins and fur seals cohabit peacefully on land. Seals keep to themselves, with macho contests to determine rank. Under water, Rules change, and penguins must be vigilant. Some days, when prevailing winds blow icy brash into the bay, penguins enjoy a slight advantage. This crust of ice pebbles from broken banks offers a perfect observation post to keep an eye out. Particularly feared is the leopard seal. Nine feet long and weighing 600 pounds, he's a fearsome and unpredictable predator. Pound for pound, 
the Weddell seal is no less intimidating. From the safety of the shore, a chin strap can only guess at the aquatic grace of the leopard seal. This colossus would do well to shed a few pounds if he's to keep up with his prey. That's hardly reassuring for the chin strap or his cousins. With the summer breeding season now well advanced, penguins prepare for a different threat, this time on land. Poaching eggs is one of the skewers' favorite recipes for survival. The gentoo normally lay two eggs. The second arrives a few days after the first as an afterthought, a kind of security in case one is stolen. Chicks are equally at risk and must be protected from the prying eyes of the skewer. The gentoo must be particularly alert during the month-long period of incubation. The slightest lapse of attention can prove fatal for eggs and chicks alike. Babies will spend another two weeks in the protective bosom of their parents. Gentoos breed at their own pace. While chicks hatch in one nest, a neighboring nest is still being built. The job of protecting and fussing over babies fall squarely on male shoulders. While the male takes up Baywatch duties, the female attends to hunting and provisioning. Good mothers give their chicks every opportunity to fatten and grow into adults, otherwise they won't survive the looming long winter. The harsh reality of life for penguins in the Antarctic won't be lost on the leopard seal, nor the fur seal. Unlike the fur seal, the leopard won't wait for penguins to fill their tender tummies before attacking. Penguins are not born leaders, but someone must take the first move. It's sure to have an effect. Stay close and you have a chance.
the sacrifice clears the way for a second party of female gentoos. Females will hunt for two weeks. While they swim and feed, penguins drink too. Special glands inside their beaks desalinate the seawater. Far from these open hunting grounds, Male penguins continue to pamper the young in Paradise Bay. And my, how they've grown. With summer fading rapidly, females must return soon to fatten the young. Chicks can fast for a few days at a time. But eventually, fathers must dig deep to keep their dependents alive. A recent discovery found that penguins are endowed with a unique ability to regurgitate fresh food. Their stomachs preserve undigested protein by destroying bacteria. How they do this is not yet fully understood. But it's enough for chicks to survive the vagaries of the summer's end. Within minutes of a storm moving in, Paradise Bay freezes over. The weather could delay mother's return even longer. For the chicks, it's a rude awakening of what's to come. Thanks to their fathers, the young are now equipped for the worst. From the top of the hill, there's still no sign of any hunting party. Has he given up too? Unlikely. A gentoo takes advantage of the snowfall to quench his thirst, because the sea is off limits until the hunters return. Fair weather brings good news for everyone. Female gentoos race the gauntlet in perfect formation, foxing the predator. Bar one, a laggard pays the fixed penalty.
dispensing with ceremony, the first arrivals waste little time looking for hungry loved ones. Plenty more scraps for scavenging gulls. And the leopard is by no means finished. Just what is he playing at? And who is he playing to? With a full belly, you can afford to play cat and mouse. The audience is not amused, particularly as their entry point is blocked. Besides, the game is up. When the prisoner makes a clean break for it, the teasing ends. Enough is enough. They've seen it all before, many times over. It's time for the backup plan, an exodus to the far side of Paradise Bay. He's lost his audience. The chin straps take no chances. They trek several kilometers to the south side of the bay, hoping for calmer waters. Neither snow, rock, nor ice deters them. They must find a safe entry point. Imagine a sack race through this. Through this. The elite cross the finishing line. A marathon proves a great leveler. In time, all contestants are accounted for and South Bay seems safe enough. Back on the north side, the leopard seal remains in playful mood. And he's spotted a new audience of gentoos. Like the chin straps, the gentoos won't be fooled by this circus act at sea. Within minutes, the entire Gentoo community votes with its feet to join Chinstraps.
Has he finally got the message? We'll see. Because on the south side, a more endearing show unfolds. The coolest baptism on earth. Young chinstraps prepare for their maiden swim, though most, understandably, get cold feet. After a few hours' initiation, the bravest take the plunge into a world that'll be their home for most of the rest of their lives. Nearby, the Weddell seal should pose no threat. Discreet and solitary by nature, he feeds off fish, not birds. Not that these chicks are wise to his gastronomic preferences, nor to the dangers of swimming alone. But wait a minute, is that a Weddell seal? Has he really developed a taste for red meat after years of denial? Or like the leopard, is he just fooling? Who wants to wait around to find out? The Dominican seagull finds the answer on a plate. Back north, the curtains have definitively come down on the leopard's circus act. Where to now? After gentoos and chinstraps, Adelie penguins happily seize the day in South Bay. They appear to have the waters all to themselves. But the leopard in North Bay has finally latched on to the last of the Adili in South Paradise Bay. But for once, he's outwitted by his nimble prey. The young female Adili won't look back until she's reached Adili land. Far to the south of Paradise Bay, Brash now gives away to real icebergs. This is the heart of Antarctica, an area that owes its name to Adele Dumont de Ville, the wife of the French explorer who first navigated the region in 1840. The all-weather surface suits penguins perfectly. What's more, leopard seals and fur seals rarely venture this far south. Only old fish face, the Weddell seal, can stand the extreme latitude. For fanatical hikers like the Adili, the ice fields are perfect for accessing new hunting grounds before the summer ends. It won't be long before penguins and seals alike leave the ice for the open sea. Enjoy it while it lasts, because when the emperor penguin is on the march, you know winter's on the way.
they do exactly the opposite to other penguins. Instead of taking to the sea, shoulder to shoulder, they'll spend the entire winter inland. They trek for weeks in their thousands to the coldest spot on Earth, where few animals, let alone men, dare venture in winter. Penguins tend to be similar in appearance and behavior. The emperor is totally different. As a rule, penguins reject all forms of nonconformity, as this albino Adili sadly learns. The emperor penguin not only differs in his choice of seasonal habitat and by his impressive size, he's also a nonconformist in many other ways. Just before winter, he picks a new mate, new being the operative word. While other penguins tend to be loyal, male emperors pick and choose every year. As daylight wanes and emperor penguins make love on the ice, Adelis enjoy one last toboggan ride. They must bid farewell for another winter to Adili land. The same goes for macaroni penguins on Elephant Island. They too will spend the winter at sea. The chin straps on Paradise Bay are in full flight. Land holds no promise for them now. Adili land reclaims the sea with every passing day and every drop in temperature. Emperor penguins are on their own now. Why do they wait for winter? One egg, one hope in the most inhospitable place on Earth. There's a reason, the emperor's sheer size. To grow in the image of one's parents takes time, so the emperor penguin chooses the longest season to raise his offspring. A delicate transfer of responsibility now takes place. Males close ranks for the duration. As for the females, they're now free to strike out across the ice for hunting grounds at sea. Two hundred kilometers of ice lie ahead of them. The outward journey takes a month.
new ice fields turned the quest for open water into an endless mirage. Female emperors probably tap into magnetic forces to negotiate this wall of mirrors. They navigate like all great explorers with the sun and the stars. Inland winds pack speeds of 250 kilometers an hour. Temperatures drop to minus 70 degrees Celsius. The emperors continue to incubate in a tight but movable scrum. They shift gently from inside to outside to keep warm. Two months after giving up their eggs, mothers return with impressive punctuality. The sight of fattened females reporting back for maternal duty warms the cockles in males' hearts. But family reunions will not last long. Male emperors have lost a lot of weight. They desperately need to feed. And so do the chicks if they're to survive the rest of the winter, which won't be easy. They must stay close for comfort and safety, or die. Those that survive have until summer to shake off their downy innocence and learn to fend for themselves. Spring put some bounce into their lives. Adult emperors still shadow the young pretenders, but within a few months, they've earned their independence. Year at sea, and the first of the macaroni penguins descend once again on Elephant Island. Mr. Macaroni reclaims his spot to Baywatch for his partner. Macaronis, Gentoos, Chinstraps, and the Adelis are back in Antarctica. Mr. and Mrs. Macaroni know from long experience that life isn't always rosy on the White Continent. <laughs> <laughs> 